Hey everybody, Mr. Macintosh here, and this video is going to be the ultimate guide for installing Mac OS Big Sur on your unsupported older Mac from 2008 all the way to 2013 using Open Core Legacy Patcher. So why would we want to do this? It's really simple. I believe in the right to repair and extending the life of your Mac as long as possible. You put your hard earned money into purchasing this machine, and if we can keep it from going to the recycler or into the garbage can, and instead into a usable machine that can run the latest version of Xcode and run all the new features of Big Sur and have the latest security updates right from Apple, that's what this video is all about. I'm going to divide this video up into chapters so you can jump to the exact section that you're going to need. Don't let the video length intimidate you. The idea that this is an ultimate guide to answer all the questions that you might have about installing macOS Big Sur using Open Core Legacy Patch on your Mac. And the video is designed to be for beginners all the way up to intermediate and even advanced users because I'm going to go over the brand new GUI application version 0.2. 2.4 and the terminal version of the application and tell you the differences and show you which one you might want to use. I'm going to perform a walkthrough on three different Mac pieces of hardware. I'm going to do it on a metal compatible MacBook Pro and I'm going to perform an upgrade from High Sierra and that'll retain all your data. Then I'm going to do it on a 2011 MacBook Pro and then I'm going to do a separate partition so you can dual boot and if you find out that you don't really like Mac OS Big Sur you can just remove that partition and continue to use Hi Sierra. And then finally, I'm going to do it on a 2010 Mac Pro and I'm going to do an erase and install of OS Big Sur. But each situation has a little bit different of a setup as you're going to need to know. And that's why I'm going over each one individually in different chapters. And if you have any questions along the way, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll answer them. We got a lot to cover. Let's jump in and get started. First, let's talk about what is Open Core Legacy Patch. The developers put together this wonderful reference site that includes all the information that you might need to know about the patcher. If you click Getting Started, it shows you this entire list of instructions, miscellaneous information, credit, documentation. But what we want to talk about is what is Open Core. Open Core is a sophisticated bootloader used to inject patch data into memory instead of disk. This means that we're able to get near native experience on many unsupported Macs with metal GPU. Use. Some of the benefits are SIP or System Integrity Protection. You can also enable File Vault 2. It also includes native over the air updates right from system preferences, recovery OS, safe mode, and single user booting. So, again, almost all of the features that Big Sur has included for its supported Macs are making it to unsupported Macs. So, now that we know what Open Core is, we can look at some of the requirements needed before we get started. Next, I wanted to go over some of the requirements. Don't skip this section. There's some very important information that you want to look over here and review before we get started to save you time and energy later trying to wonder what's going on or what problem is on your install. So first of all, back up all your data before you begin. I recommend backing up your data before you perform an upgrade or an update for even supported Macs. It's always good practice and if something goes wrong, you have all your files. The second thing is with creating a USB boot drive that we're going to use to install Mac OS Big Sur. So what you want to be able to have is a 16 gigabyte or larger, probably a USB 3.0 or faster USB stick to be able to do this, or you could use an external hard drive. When you're erasing the USB drive, make sure you use GUID partition scheme in the options. And again, we're going to go over all this later, but this is an important thing to know first, because this was the number one question in the comments of my previous video, that they could not see the USB in the Open Core Legacy Patcher options because they did not format it this way. Also use Mac OS Extended Journal when you're erasing the root of the drive. The third part of that USB is always recommended to keep that Open Core Legacy Patcher USB installer that you created just in case something goes wrong in the future. Also, when you're creating that installer media and putting the Open Core Legacy Patcher onto that USB hard drive, create it on the hardware that you're going to use. And that's important because if you don't, you might be creating the information in the patches for the model that you're creating it on instead of having the information you need for that hardware that you're using to create it for. Fourth thing is Bootcamp. If you're using Bootcamp, look at the link in the description that talks about Bootcamp because legacy master boot record based installs won't show up in Open Core Legacy Patch or Booter. The developers recommend following the guide on installing a UEFI Windows install to get that working. Also, the hardware recommendations that I recommend that you have is at least an SSD hard drive and eight gigabytes of memory. For Big Sur compatibility updates and support, you 
you can go to the Open Core Legacy Patcher website that gives you all the supported machines and information. There's also a Discord group that you can join to ask questions. There's also a huge Mac Rumors forum thread that you can also go to see the latest information and see what others are talking or ask additional questions. You can always post the question in the comments and I can answer and help you out. Now let's talk about the supported models. From 2008 all the way to 2011 are supported for MacBook, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, Mac Mini, iMac, and Mac Pro. Now full support means that you have a metal compatible graphics card. And these models include a 2012 MacBook Air, 2012 and 2013 MacBook Pro, 2012 Mac Mini, 2012 to 2013 iMac. And that means that you can install Open Core Legacy Patcher and Big Sur and not have to do anything else after you're fully supported. But if you have one of older models, you'll need to install the graphics acceleration patches after. So if you have a 2011 or lower Mac, you'll have to install those patches. But if you have a Mac Pro with a metal graphics card, you won't have to do that. So those are the requirements and some recommendations that you will want to know before we get started here. Before we start and create our USB installer, I wanted to talk about the two versions of Open Core Legacy Patcher app and show you the differences so you can pick which one you would like to use. When you visit the Open Core Legacy Patcher is that it's on GitHub and it's fully open source. So if you want to look at the files themselves, they're all available for you to look at. They're not behind closed doors. Anybody can go out in here and look at every single file that's made available. It's a group effort by multiple developers to be able to create this wonderful application. So now that you're here, the first thing you want to be able to go is over to here to the releases section. At the time of this filming, the latest version is 0.2.4, but if you're looking at this in the future, it might be a higher version, but we'll go right into here by clicking on the latest release and you always want to download the, the latest release. So we'll click on this button and it'll talk about all the changes that are made on each release. So when you can scroll down, you'll see this again, this is on version 2.4. And when we look at the bottom, there's two different zips that we want to be able to download download and use. The first one is the GUI version, that's the application, and the second one is the terminal version of the menu system. So let's take a look at the differences with those two. Users have asked the developers to come up with a GUI app to make it a little bit easier to understand when you're used to using applications to do normal day-to-day -day things. But there's some differences that you'll want to know. So for example, we go into the settings by clicking the gear here, you can see that there is settings but features are missing. So if we go into the patch of settings number four and hit enter, we'll see all the patcher settings. So if we go into the settings of the GUI version, we'll see settings like, for example, the late boom settings that were put in there for the Mac Pro are not in here. There's also allow open core on native models. For example, if you want to be able to install Monterey and use AirPlay 2, that's not in here either. The bottom line is I recommend using the terminal version of the application because this is the version that developers are actively developing for. Yes, they do have the GUI version in mind, but all the features are here along with with native hardware scanning. So for example, if you have an iMac and you upgraded the video card to a metal compatible card, the terminal version can scan for those settings and adjust the patcher settings for it. The GUI version just basically uses a list of stock versions of hardware to be able to create the patcher when we build and install OpenCore. That's why I recommend using the terminal version. I'll show you how to use this when we get started here, but most of the walkthroughs will be using the terminal version of the application. Again, if you have any questions, on either one, feel free to post them in the comments. Okay, now let's talk about how to create the USB installer that we're gonna to use to boot our Mac to the Mac OS Big Sur install. So the first thing we need, like we talked about in the requirements, is a 16 gigabyte or larger external hard drive or USB drive. So let's plug that into our Mac right now. Okay, there it is on our desktop. So the first thing is, is that most USB drives that you buy at the store are will be formatted that, so they can be read within Windows. So what we'll have to do is we're gonna open up Disk Utility. We'll hit Command Space to be able to open up Spotlight and type in Disk Utility and hit Enter. Once Disk Utility is open, we'll see our USB drive here, but this is where most people get tripped up, right? If you hit Erase right here, like this, you're missing a critical option in here. As you can see, it is formatted in DOS, VAT32, but we're missing the partition scheme. So we'll hit cancel here. We'll go up into view, show all devices, and then we'll be able to click on the root of the USB drive, then hit erase. 
then there's the scheme. Notice how it's master boot record. If you did it before without this option selected to GUID partition map, it would not show up in Open Core Legacy Patcher settings for you to be able to create the install for Mac OS Big Sur. That's an important step. We also want to make sure that the format is Mac OS Extended Journal, and then you can name it whatever you want. You can leave it on title because it will be renamed once we install Mac OS Big Sur to it. So we'll hit erase. And now if you get the time machine uh, message come up, just hit don't use and we'll hit done here. And we are done with disk utility and we can close it. Now we have our USB drive ready and formatted for install. Now the first thing we need to do is go download the full installer of Mac OS Big Sur. Now there's a lot of ways we can do this, but I've got a super easy way. On my website, I host all of the current versions of Mac OS Big Sur installers directly from Apple servers. And I pull those URLs and I put them into a nice table down here showing all the versions. So at the time of this taping, the latest version is 11.5.2, but when you watch this video, maybe 11.6 might be out and the latest version will be at the top. All you need to do is click on this link, start the download it, and you can see that the date of the install and if it's still available. Some of the older versions are no longer available and I changed that setting right there. So to start the download, just click here. And if that doesn't start downloading it, like if you're using Chrome and you click on it, it does nothing, right click on it or control click on there copy the link and do a command T to open up a new tab and you can right click on it again and paste the link in here and if we go to the very front of the link you can see this is directly from Apple servers I've already got it downloaded in our downloads folder and you can see that's what it's called the install assistant PKG inside this package is the full installer so we'll have to install this package first click on it once and it'll open up the installer click on continue install and then type in your administrator password. And it's gonna install this right to the applications folder. And we'll see it finished. And there it is, install Mac OS Big Sur, ready to go. So we'll go back to the installer, we'll hit close, and we got the full installer. Now the next thing we need to do is open up the terminal application because that's how we're gonna create the install media. Click command space to get spotlight again, and we'll type in terminal and hit enter. And we're gonna go back to our applications folder to where that Big Sur installer is. And then we're gonna go inside the package to get to the command to run it really fast. So all you need to do is right click or control click on the Big Sur installer, click show package contents. Then you'll get to the folder structure of the Big Sur installer. Go into the contents folder and then go into the resources folder and create install media is the application or the binary that we're gonna to use to create the Big Sur installer. Let's go back to the terminal window first though because we need to run the command as an administrator. To do that, you type in sudo and then space. Then we can go back to the finder window and drag this binary right to the window and it'll auto complete the entire command for us. Now we have to issue it a option. We're gonna do the volume option. So dash dash volume and then space and then we can drag the USB that we just erased right to the window. And that's it, hit enter. And last first for the password, we'll type in our administrator password. It won't show us anything on this screen when we're typing, but it is typing it so others looking over your shoulder don't see the password in terminal. So we'll hit return and enter. It's gonna say, hey, you sure you wanna erase? Well, we already erased the drive. Yes, we are. So we'll click in Y for yes and hit enter or return. And then it's gonna immediately start to erase the disk again. And the time machine might come up again and that's okay. Click don't use. And it's gonna immediately start copying the files to the disk. The amount of time that it's gonna to take to do this is all dependent on how fast your USB flash drive is. For example, if you get the absolute cheapest one from Amazon, that's okay, it'll still work, but it might be a little bit slower and it could take all the way up to 20 minutes for the files to copy because keep in mind, the full installer is 12 to 13 gigabytes in size. That's why you had to get a 16 gigabyte USB flash drive. So we'll see this copying. And if you wanted to, to monitor the process, we could open up Activity Monitor. So we'll do Command Space again for Spotlight.
type in activity monitor and hit enter and then we can click on the disk tab and monitor how fast the files are actually copying to the USB drive. As you can see now, they're copying around 64 megabytes a second and they will fluctuate between anywhere between 200 all the way down to maybe like 20. So this should be the average speed. We'll go back here and we watch that go. We're at 30%. We'll be back in a little bit when this is finished. Okay, it's done. As you can see here, copying the disk 0 to 100%, making the disk bootable. Install media is now available at Volumes Install Mac OS Big Sur. Let's take a look at that on the desktop here. We'll close this window and we'll open up the USB drive. And as you can see inside, install Mac OS Big Sur. Let me show you a little quick tip. If you click on the USB icon and then go Command I, you'll see the information window come up. Do it again, Command I on the actual installer, Command I. And then you can click on the icon here, do a command C to copy it, and then go click on the icon for the install Mac OS Big Sur and go command V to paste it. And now you got a cool Mac OS Big Sur installer icon on there. Now that we have that, we need to be able to put the bootloader onto the USB drive to be able to tell the Mac that this is a newer Mac so it will be able to boot the Mac OS Big Sur installer. And we're gonna do that with OpenCore Legacy Patcher. Once we're on the OpenCore Legacy Patcher GitHub page, we can scroll down here to the releases section and make sure you click on the latest release right here. And it'll take us to the latest release. We'll scroll down and we will get the TUI or the Terminal User Interface OpenCore Legacy Patcher application. And we're also gonna get the GUI version of the application so we can show you how to use that too. Once they're done, they're in here into the download section. We'll open them up and we want to copy them into our applications folder. So we'll open up our downloads folder again and we can just drag into the applications folder like that. We got the GUI version here and we got the TUI here. And we'll click open. So the first thing we want to do, we need to make sure that when we build the installer, to be able to put the files onto the USB drive, we do it on the piece of hardware that we're using to patch. So OpenCore Legacy Patcher re realizes that this is a early 2013 metal compatible MacBook Pro, and it's gonna build the settings when we build the installer to exactly what we need. So the first thing we need to do is look at the patcher settings. So we can click number five to look at the, the patcher settings here. So click on number five, and then we'll hit enter and then we can see all the settings that are set in here. Now, one thing that I recommend we do in case we run into any trouble is to enable the verbose mode. What that means is it hides the general Apple logo and the progress bar and then shows you all the output of the boot system. So if you run into problems and you go onto the uh, into the forms or you put into the chat like, hey, my installer is stuck at this point, well, no one knows because it's just got a progress bar. But when you enable verbose mode, it shows you exactly where it gets stuck on. So we'll click on number one to enable verbose mode. We'll click Y, yes. And as you can see, it changed to true. Also as true as show boot picker mode, that's fine for this situation. And as you can see here, SIP and secure boot model are also set to false. Since we are on a fully metal compatible Mac, we can go into those settings. So we can click on 11 and we can enable both by clicking number one. So now we have AMFI enabled. We have SIP and secure boot also enabled because again, this is a metal compatible Mac. When we go to a non-metal compatible Mac from 2011 or older, all three of these will have to be disabled. And to do it in the GUI version, we click on the settings in here and we would click and disable AMFI, disable secure boot and disable system integrity protection. And then we have those settings set and then we could click build and install open core. And when we click on that button, it gives us the drives that we wanna be able to install in. And all we need to do is click on our USB drive here to have it continue. That's how you do it on the GUI version. But since we're doing it on the terminal version, click Q to quit and now we're at the main menu now we can build open core with the settings that we just selected in the application so we'll click on number one and hit enter and it's building all of those settings and all the files that it's going to need to boot the system to the installer and it put all those files to this temporary location before we put them onto the USB drive so we'll click enter to go back 
Now we can click number two to install those files to our USB drive. So we'll click on number two and hit enter. Now it's gonna say, well, where do you wanna install those files? Well, we wanna install it on our USB flash drive. The Apple SSD you can see is the internal drive. We are not gonna do that yet. You can do that and then you can use it to boot. But the problem is if something goes wrong, you won't have the USB drive to fall back on. That's why we're creating the USB drive. So we always have something to fall back on if something goes wrong with the install. So we're gonna click number two. We're installing to the USB drive and hit enter. Now it's saying what EFI partition that you want to be able to install on. There's only one, so we're gonna click on one and then we're gonna hit enter. And then it says it needs an administrator password to be able to do that. We'll do that now. And there it is, hit enter to continue and we're ready to go with that USB flash drive. It's ready to boot to, and it's ready to use it to install Mac OS Big Sur on this device. And remember, on this MacBook Pro, we're performing an upgrade. So we're gonna be able to keep all the data that we have and applications on here, and then just upgrade to Big Sur. So to, to prove that we're gonna perform an upgrade, we'll just create a couple of folders, and we'll take a screenshot here and we'll have all these files on the desktop when we're done. So now we're ready. We've got our USB installer ready to go and plugged in. All we need to do is reboot. We'll quit these applications. We'll click Q to quit and terminate. Go to Apple and we will reboot. Now the first thing we need to do is hold down the option key. The option key on the keyboard will tell the Mac to show the boot picker, to say, hey, I wanna boot to something else other than the internal hard drive. So that's what the option key does. You heard the chime here, we'll give it a second here, and we'll see all the boot options, including our USB drive. And there we go. The first thing we need to do is arrow over to EFI boot, hit the enter key, and then you'll see we're in boot EFI for the installer, we'll click on enter and it's going to boot the system to the installer of mac os big sur and as you can see on the screen this is the verbose mode boot that we were talking about earlier normally you would see an apple logo with a progress bar here and that's all you would see until we got to the installer but now we're seeing all the things that happen behind the scenes when we're booting to the installer so if it gets caught up in here you'll be able to tell someone hey it got caught up on this mode and it won't go any further what could be possibly wrong but you wouldn't be able to tell that if all it does is get stuck at a progress bar so in a second here we'll be at the installer okay we're now in Mac OS Big Sur Recovery. Since this is an upgrade, we don't have to do anything other than to click on Install Mac OS Big Sur. So we'll click on that and we'll click on Continue and we'll click on Continue again. We'll agree, agree again. And then the internal hard drive and click Continue. And there we go. The install time all depends on which piece of hardware you have. For example, if you're installing this on a 2010 MacBook Pro, it's going to be a little bit slower. But since we're doing it on one of the fastest unsupported Macs, this is only going to take about 20 minutes for the upgrade process. We'll let this go and I'll catch you after we finish the upgrade and we'll be at the login window. Okay, we're back. We're at the login window after the upgrade to Mac OS Big Sur. All we need to do is log in. Now, as you can see in the upper right hand corner, the notification bar up here, performance and battery life may be affected until spotlight indexing and a couple other maintenance jobs are complete. And there we are on a desktop. So we'll close out of that warning that we just said. So it usually takes you know, between five and 15 minutes for this part to be complete. And like I said, if the Mac is a little bit slow, wait for that to clear up and then it should be a little bit quicker. We can close this window. And as we can see, here are the files that we took a screenshot of High Sierra and the untitled folder we created. So the upgrade worked out perfectly. Now, there's only one last step we need to do, and that is to install the bootloader to the internal hard drive Drive, so we don't need to boot off the USB drive anymore. So what we can do is we can eject the USB installer. 
Okay, I'll quickly show you on both applications. On the GUI application, all we need to do is click build an open core after we double check the settings. So we'll go back into the settings and make sure all the settings are correct. It is detected that we are on a MacBook Pro 10.1 2013 model. Remember, we do not want to disable secure boot model. We do not want to disable system integrity protection and we don't want to disable AMFI. We also don't want verbose mode on and we also want to hide the open core boot picker. Now those settings are set. Now we need to go over here, click build and install open core. We can now install to the internal hard drive, click continue. And then we need to administer the password. And there it goes. And that's it. It's all done on the GUI side. We can do it on the terminal user interface application. We will change the patcher settings number five. And we want to see how enable verbose mode is on on number one. We're going to click on number one. We're going to make sure that is off. So we'll hit no. So now that is set to false up here. Now we also want to turn set boot picker to off. So we'll click number four. And we want to click no, show the boot picker by default. We also want to make sure the AMFI is enabled. And when that's currently false, that's good to go because that's, it's the option says disable AMFI. Also, we want to make sure that since this is a metal compatible Mac, that SIP and secure boot are on. So we're going to go back into 11. And we're going to enable both by clicking one. Now those are both set to true. We are ready to build. So we'll queue to quit. And now we can build those settings into the temporary directory. Enter. Now we're back. Now we can install those settings to the internal hard drive. Number two. Now we can select the internal Apple SSD, which is zero and enter. And we want to click the only EFI that's on there. Number one, enter the administrator password. Hit enter to continue and that's it. So as you can see, the USB was still plugged out. I'm going to disconnect it right now. So the USB is disconnected. So when we reboot, the system is going to come up on its own without the USB plugged in because we installed the bootloader to the internal hard drive and verbose mode is not gonna be activated. The Mac will boot up just like a normal supported Mac will. Okay, all we need to do is click on Apple to restart and we're gonna to have to hold down the option key because we have to set the default startup disk. So as soon as it goes down, you can hold down option, hear the chime, give it a second. And we're gonna set the default boot disk by holding down the control key once we see it. So once it's on EFI boot, hold down control, you see it's turned to a circle with an arrow, hit enter. And now that EFI bootloader is set as the main default hard drive and your Mac's gonna reboot just like this every single time you turn it on. You'll see the Apple logo and the progress bar and you will not see the boot picker anymore. And here we are, right at the login window, we'll log in. The metal compatible Mac is the easiest Mac to patch because we don't have to do any other things other than to set that default bootloader after installing the OpenCore Legacy Patcher to the internal hard drive. We do not have to install the graphics acceleration patches because we already have a metal GPU. The only other thing I wanted to touch on is if you want to install software updates, all you need to do is go into system preferences and click on software update and you can install software updates right from system preferences. And as you can see, this, this Mac is already up to date. If you see an update, all you need to do is click download here and it'll install the update with no additional issues. That's installing Mac OS Big Sur and Open Core Legacy Patcher on an early 2013 metal supported GPU. Okay, the next example is going to be our 2011 MacBook Pro 15 inch. This particular model, since it does not have a metal compatible graphics card, will need to have the graphics acceleration volume patches installed after and we'll have to disable some settings in OpenCore Legacy Patcher to be able to get those patches installed. So let's get started on how to get this particular model set up. So the first thing we need, like we talked about before, is that USB installer that we use. It already has the Big Sur installer on it from the previous install, and we can just use that again. All we're gonna do is put the 2011 MacBook Pro version of the installer patch files on there. So let's plug that in now, and we'll wait for it to come up on the desktop and while we're waiting for that, we can start up OpenCore Legacy Patcher. Now, I said I was going to show you the two different versions. Now, in this particular situation, they are very close again. So if we wanted to be able to build the OpenCore 
in the GUI version of the application, all you need to do is go into the settings. As you can see, it is detected as a MacBook Pro 8.2 2011. And then we have the disable system and integrity protection on. We have disable AMFI and we have disable secure boot model. So that's ready to go. We also want to turn on verbose mode boot until we have it all installed and everything's working properly. So we can leave all these other settings the same and we can go back to the patcher app and we can click build install and build open core. We know that this is the USB drive. We're not installing to the internal hard drive now. So we click that and it's selected. We'll click on continue. We need the administrator password to do that. And as you can see, the GUI version of the open core legacy patcher is building and installing the open core onto the drive. There it is. It put these temporary files here. It mounted the drive and installed all the files. And now it's done and we can just hit quit. Now we're going to go through that same thing all over again on the terminal version if you want to do that. So what we need to do is go into number five for the settings. And then in here, we're going to click number one to enable verbose mode. We'll click Y for yes. As you can see, that turned to true here. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to disable AMFI. So we'll click on number 10. Yes, we are. So as you can see, that's set to true. Number 11, we are going to disable SIP and secure boot. We're going to disable both by clicking on four, hit enter. As you can see, all those three are set off now. So we're ready to build open core. So we'll hit quit. So now we can click build open core. Number one, now it's gonna take all those files that we just set and those settings, and it created that to the temporary location right here. We'll hit enter to go back. Now it's gonna take those files from that temporary directory and install them onto the USB drive right here. So now we'll click number two, install open core to USB or internal drive. Number, click number two. And then it says the, pick, the boot picker is loading and saying, which one do you want to install it on? We don't want to install it on the internal hard drive yet. We want to install it onto the USB drive. So we will click on number two because we know that that is our USB drive here. And then hit enter. And it's going to say, we need to install a EFI partition to this USB drive. And that's fine. There's only one. We'll click number one, hit enter. We'll enter in our administrator password. And as you can see, it mounts the EFI, transfers the files and unmounts it, and then it's complete, hit enter. Now this USB drive is instead of that MacBook Pro 2011 settings, we just reset it to have the MacBook Pro 2011 settings and pieces that it's gonna need to use to boot to be able to install Mac OS Big Sur. What I mentioned in the earlier part of the video is, is that in this example, I'm going to create another container to install Mac OS Big Sur on. That you can use this as a dual boot system to be able to run High Sierra Mac OS Big Sur. So if you install Mac OS Big Sur and you're like, eh, I don't know if I really like that, I'm going to remove it. Or let's say you wanna always run Mac OS Big Sur, and then you have maybe a 32-bit application and you also wanna go back to High Sierra, you can. So that's what this example is gonna be about. So we are ready to reboot to the installer. So we'll close the terminal window and we'll go to Apple to reboot. We're gonna hold down the option key on the keyboard to be able to get to the boot picker so we can boot to the EFI bootloader off of the USB drive and then we'll boot to the Mac OS Big Sur installer. And there we go. We'll arrow over to the EFI boot and hit enter. And now we're in the open core EFI bootloader. We're gonna tab over or arrow over to the install Mac OS Big Sur and hit enter. And as you can see, verbose mode is on from the settings that we set. And it's gonna be able to show us all this, the what's happening behind the scenes when we normally see the progress bar with the Apple logo booting into the installer. Now this is really handy if for some reason there's problems booting into the installer or later booting up into Mac OS Big Sur once we're done because we'll be able to see where the problem is instead of just looking at a blank screen with the progress bar. And that's why we enable verbose mode when we're doing the install. Okay, we're in Mac OS Big Sur recovery. Now, the first thing we're gonna need to do, so go into disk utility because we are going to partition the drive. Now we've got two ways to do this. 
when I mean partition the drive. So we'll go up here, we'll click on view, show all devices, and then we'll click on the root of the drive of the internal drive. As you can see, it says internal, and then we'll click on partition. When I say that there's two different ways we can do this, we can create a separate partition on the drive that we will use to install Big Sur, or we can add another volume. And I'll show you what that looks like. When we click on the plus button, we get this message that shows up. It says, do you want to add a volume to the APFS container? Or do you want to divide the container storage into separate partitions? When an Apple file system container has multiple volumes, the free space is shared and, be can, and can be allocated to any of the individual volumes as needed. So if we click add a volume, it's going to add a volume inside here and allocate any needed size to that. And then there'll be one container but we're gonna do an add a partition to do a separate one. And we're doing that because if something goes wrong in one, we can get rid of one and the other one's fine. Sometimes with a volume, if there's a problem with the volume, maybe the entire drive has problems and you can't boot Big Sur or Hi Sierra, but it is pretty reliable. But in this case, that's why I wanna do an add partition. So we'll add partition, as you can see, it's like a walled off line here with two different partitions. This is the Mac OS hard drive partition with Hi Sierra on it, 1013. And this is the second partition we're gonna to use to install Mac OS Big Sur. So we're gonna name the drive Macintosh hard drive Big Sur, and then we'll hit apply. Now it's going to shrink the media, create a brand new empty partition, and then we'll be able to use that to install a fresh copy of Mac OS Big Sur. Okay, we're done, we'll click done. And now we can exit disk utility. And as you can see, before we leave, you can see the dual containers in here. This is Mac OS High Sierra 1013, and this is the one we're gonna use for Mac OS Big Sur. Okay, we'll click out of disk utility. And now we can go to install Mac OS Big Sur. We'll click continue and continue agree agree and now we can see the two volumes as you can see that's why we need this mac os big sur so we'll click on the big sur empty partition we'll click on continue and there it goes it's going to copy the files from the installer from the usb to a temporary location on the hard drive reboot the system install from that temporary location to the internal partition before you know it we'll be at the setup assistant for mac os big sur we'll catch you right after that's done Okay, we're back up. Mac OS Big Sur installed on our 2011 MacBook Pro on a separate partition. Now, keep in mind, since we need to install the accelerated graphics patch, the setup assistant here, or if you perform a upgrade and you're logging in, the system will be really slow. You might get some pinwheeling here. Once we get to the desktop and get OpenCore Legacy Patcher up and running, we'll install the patches, reboot, and it'll be running really smooth after that. So I'm gonna run this system through the setup assistant and then we'll once we're at the desktop I'll pick right back up okay we're at the desktop now again remember we're gonna be still a little bit slow even after we get to the desktop even trying to open Safari might take anywhere between 30 and 60 seconds and again that's because we're not running with accelerated graphics yet so let's open up Safari I already pre-opened it and then closed it and then reopened it again so that's why it's opening quick we'll go to the open core legacy patcher page and we will download our release. Open up Finder, and then we'll open up the Applications folder, and then we will drag in the first one, which is the GUI. To click in there, GUI. And again, you don't have to do this. You only pick the one that you want to use, but I'm showing you both of them. Move this to the side, and then we will open up the TU, the terminal user interface application. And I'm going to show you how to do a uh, patch the volume patch to both. First thing we need to do is we've got a USB installed, plugged in, and it's still using that to boot. We're going to install the, the patches first for the accelerated graphics just to make sure everything works. And then we'll install open core to the internal hard drive so we can unplug the USB and not even use it anymore. So the first thing we need to do on the GUI application is simply click patch system volume. We'll enter an administrator password 
enter. And it'll say patching the system. It downloads directly from the Open Core Legacy Patcher server all the files that it needs for this particular model. It's checking and then unzipping the download. It's deleting the current ones, the current kecks that are in there and installing the accelerated graphics text and it's rebuilding the kernel cache now. It'll take a second. And then that's it, done. Operation successfully completed. We can quit out of the GUI app. Now, if we wanted to do that with the terminal user interface application, all we need to do is click on number three to install the post volume patch. Number three, hit enter. And it says patches the root volume to fix the issues such as graphics acceleration for NVIDIA, Intel, and AMD. All we need to do is click number one and hit enter. And it says the following patches will be applied. Added legacy ATI Terascale 2 graphics patch and added legacy Intel Sandy Bridge graphics patch. And then we're going to click yes. And it's going to download again from the server. And then apply the patches and then we'll be good to go. And it says put the files to the temporary location. Click enter to continue. Enter the administrator password. Enter. And it's already found it because it's already been patching. So it's skipping that part and then redoing it. And then press enter to rebuild the cache. Enter for the snapshot. Enter to continue. It says we need to reboot to, for the patches to take effect. We'll hit enter and Q to quit. And all we need to do is terminate and restart. Okay, we're back at the login window. We'll log in. And we're back at the desktop. You can basically just start opening up things and see how the performance is. It, it opens up immediately. The other thing that you can tell right away is if you minimize the window, it takes multiple seconds to minimize. If you click minimize and it goes right down, you know we're good to go. Now we can also verify by clicking Apple about this Mac. As you can see in system information, both the AMD Radeon HD 6490M and the Intel Integrated HD Graphics 3000 chip are detected and ready to go. Now the final piece of the puzzle is to install open core legacy patcher onto the internal hard drive for the bootloader so we don't have to use this USB drive anymore so what we need to do is go back into applications and open up both the GUI and the terminal user interface and I'll show you how to do it on both of them to check the settings all we need to do is go into the settings again on the GUI application and make sure since we have to use the accelerated graphics patches, we need to disable system integrity protection, AMFI, and then secure boot. Those are already selected and MacBook Pro also is 8.2 2011 MacBook Pro 15 inch is also selected and we are not going to do the verbose boot because we want the system to boot up like normal. Also, we want to hide the open core picker. So we've got all those settings set. We can click away and then click build and install open core. Now, instead of putting it to the USB, we're going to put the bootloader onto the internal hard drive so we no longer need the USB. Click continue and there it goes. It needs the administrator password. And it's installing the files to the internal drive. And that's it. Done, operation completed, successfully quit. So we're gonna do the same thing on the TUI app. We're going to change the patcher settings by clicking number five. And again, remember, I'm only showing you both applications to show you the differences and what you have to do. You do not need to run both applications, only the one that you want to use. And again, I re recommend using the TUI or the terminal user interface application. So now once we're in the settings, you see how enable verbose mode is on. We're going to click one. We're going to turn verbose mode off. So that's now off. We're also going to click number four to set the boot picker to off. Now that's also off. Now also we need to make sure that AMFI is disabled. So we'll click on 10 and disable AMFI. And then also we want to make sure that SIP and secure boot are also off. We'll click on 11 
and make sure that both are disabled by clicking number four. And now everything is disabled. Now we click Q to quit and then build open core with number one. Now it is all built to the temporary location. We'll click enter to go back. Now we can install those files in the bootloader to the internal hard drive by clicking number two. And we are going to install it to the internal hard drive. On this particular 2011, I updated the hard drive from the internal 320 gigabyte spinning hard drive to a Samsung 850 Evo SSD drive 120 gigabytes. So we'll click on number zero because that's the internal hard drive. And number one for the EFI. And we'll type in the administrator password. And there we go. As you can see, it loads the FAI partition over here, installs the bootloader, and then ejects it, and then hit enter to continue. And now we're back at the screen. We'll hit Q to quit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to eject and unplug the USB flash drive and unplug it from the device. And then what we're going to do is we're going to reboot, hold down the option key, and make the EFI bootloader the default hard drive to boot to and then it'll boot automatically every every time after that so we'll hit apple to restart and we'll hold down option and then hold down control and then hit enter as you can see that it's the circle with the arrow and hit enter now that defaults the open core legacy patcher bootloader to be able to boot every single time and this is what we'll see when we start our mac time we turn it on or restart the system and that's what a normal mac looks like we don't see the boot picker anymore and we don't see the verbose boot and look at this we're right back at the login window here and that boot only took about 10 seconds from chime to login window and probably an additional four or five seconds to desktop and that is pretty impressive for mac os big sur on a 10 year old macbook pro the last part of this is that we did a split hard drive so let's say you wanted to boot back into high sierra so all we need to do is click restart and we'll hold down the option key Okay, now to boot back into High Sierra, all we need to do is tab over to go to Macintosh hard drive that's got High Sierra on it. We'll click enter and we're booting right back into High Sierra. That's it, we got a dual boot system now. Now since we have the default hard drive as Mac OS Big Sur, all we need to do is click reboot and it'll take us right back into Big Sur. To get into High Sierra, since it's not the default, that's why we gotta hold down the option. So when we click on restart here, this is going to go into Mac OS Big Sur automatically. Click restart, give it a second. And there we go, we're loading back into Big Sur. That's it, log back in. And there's our dual boot system. So that's the second walkthrough of installing Open Core Legacy Patcher, Mac OS Big Sur, and setting up a dual boot on a 2011 MacBook Pro. The third section will be our Mac Pro where we're gonna perform a fresh install. Let's jump right into that. Okay, installing Mac OS Big Sur on a 5 comma 1 2010 Mac Pro. Ever since 11.3 came out, there was problems with the installer. Apple changed something that prevented the Mac Pro from booting. Only 11.23 was workable for the longest time. The developers worked on this situation and came up with a solution called Late Bloom. What it was is a, is a delay in the booting process that allowed the Mac to be able to boot 11.3 and newer and it was a wonderful solution and that was built into open core legacy patcher the latest version as we followed through the last couple steps we would have to install the graphics acceleration packages after and wait for safari to load and it was really slow so what we're going to do this time since we're doing an erase install is we're going to download open core legacy patcher and then just copy it over to the usb drive so as soon as it comes back we don't have to open up safari we don't have to download or install anything we'll just drag the app right over so we'll go up 
to the Open Core Legacy Patcher, go to the GitHub, go to the latest releases, and we're gonna download the terminal user interface version only. In the two previous walkthroughs, I showed you how to use each version of Open Core Legacy Patcher. That's why this version is special because the late bloom settings are only configurable in the terminal user interface applications. And we'll take a look at that once we open it up. So now that's download and we'll open up our USB installer, click on downloads and drag our Open Core Legacy Patcher application right to our USB installer. So we'll have it as soon as we come back up. Those late bloom settings are right in here and I'll show you what those look like. So we'll look at the Patcher settings. We'll click on number five. And these are the late bloom settings that I was talking about. This is a Mac Pro. The detection is setting it as a default at the delay of 250. If you notice from the previous videos, this was actually set, I think it was set at 150. And we can actually check that by, is in the, in the default settings were set at 250. And that should be good enough for the Mac to boot. Now, keep in mind, if you boot the Mac Pro and it doesn't boot properly, we can set that to a higher number like 500, for example. But 250 default should be good to go. And we'll get to that later. But that's what we'll set it to for now. And we'll finish all the settings that we're gonna need to do this install. So first we wanna make sure verbose boot is enabled so we can see if there's a problem. So we'll click on number one and we'll click on yes we want to enable verbose mode that's enabled now set show boot picker mode that's fine on we need to disable amfi so we'll make sure we click on number 10 and we want to disable yes so that's showing true and we need to click on 11 to disable both sip and secure boot we'll click on number four to disable them both we're only disabling those three because we have a non-metal graphics card in this mac pro if you have a metal compatible graphics card you can leave all three enabled so we will click on Q because we have all of our settings set and now we can build that open core with those settings to the temporary location click enter to go back with that's done and now we can install it to our USB drive and it's going to overwrite those settings that we had for the two previous installs that we just did we'll click 2 to install open core to the USB drive now as you can see here the Apple SSD is number 0 and our USB is on number 2 so we'll click on number 2 and we will click number one for the EFI of the USB. And we'll enter in our administrator password. And that's it. It's loaded the bootloader onto the EFI folder of the USB flash drive. We'll click enter to continue and cue to quit. Now we're ready to boot to the installer. We will click on Apple to reboot and we're gonna hold down the option key and we're gonna click on EFI boot as soon as we see the boot picker. Okay, after holding option, we see the EFI boot. We'll hit the arrow key over to EFI boot and hit enter. Now we're in the open core boot picker. We can arrow over again to install macOS Big Sur to boot to the macOS Big Sur installer. Here's that late bloom setting that we set or we left as a default setting for the Mac Pro to be able to boot past that problem in 11.3 plus. This is 11.5.2 installer that we're booting to, so we shouldn't have any issue getting to the installer now. Now, if your Mac Pro doesn't boot to the installer of the OS and you get a screen like this with verbose mode, or you get a message at the bottom and it gets stalled on crypto lock, no big deal, just power the Mac down, power it back up, and it should boot right into the installer or the OS. Now, I'll show you later in the Mac Pro video how to adjust the late bloom settings if we have to increase it to maybe 500, for example. But again, if you get this or the crypto lock, just reboot and you should be able to get right back into the installer. Okay, we made it to the Mac OS Big Sur installer on our Mac Pro. In this third demonstration, we are going to do an erase and install. So we're going to go into Disk Utility, click Continue. We're going to click on Macintosh Hard Drive and we're going to erase the entire drive and perform a fresh installation. So we're going to go up to Erase and we can leave Macintosh Hard Drive there and leave the format APFS and click on Erase. Okay, done. And we'll close Disk Utility. And we'll click Install MacOS Big Sur. Continue. Agree. Agree. And install to the Macintosh hard drive. Continue. And there we go. Before you know it, we'll be at the Setup Assistant. We'll catch you right when we get there. 
Okay, we just rebooted after the install. The hard disk is automatically selected so you don't even have to do anything. The Mac Pro will boot back up and we should be at the setup assistant in no time. Once we install OpenCore Legacy Patcher to the internal disk after the GPU patches, you won't see any of this anymore because we'll turn verbose mode boot off. Okay, we're at the setup assistant. I'm gonna take this through, because remember, it's very slow going through this entire menu process because we don't have the accelerated graphics. So it'll take a little while. You might see some pinwheeling, but that's okay. And we'll be right back. All right, we finished through the setup assistant. We created our account and we're now on the desktop on our Mac Pro from 2010 running Mac OS Big Sur. We're only two steps left. The first step we have to do is install the graphics acceleration patches. So now remember we save time. We don't have to open up Safari to download. We put that application inside of our USB. So we'll double click on our USB and give it a second. Like I said, it's going to be a little bit slow. And there is our open core legacy patcher application. You can copy it to our applications folder. We'll click on finder. We'll do a command N for a new window. And then we will click on applications and we'll drag it right over. And there it is. Let's fire it up. All we need to do is click number three for post install volume patch and then enter. Now this says that it is going to patch the root volume. All we need to do is click on number one to patch the volume. It says that it's going to add legacy ATI Terascale 2 graphics patch for our ATI card. And we'll click yes. And there it goes. It's gonna download all the files that it needs to be able to perform the patches. Unzipping the download and installing. Click enter to continue. Now we need to enter in our administrator password. And there it goes. Click enter to rebuild the cache. Click enter to continue with the snapshotting. And then that's it. Click enter to continue to exit. All we need to do is reboot for the patches to be put into play and for the acceleration to work. Now there's one step that we need to think about here. If you're running an ATI card, which we are, as you can see, there's a small problem. And let me show you what that is. Erratic colors on ATI Terascale 2 GPUs. Due to an odd bug in the GPU, many users will experience erratic strobing colors or inverted colors. To fix that, all we need to do is download Res Extreme, and that's a little application that lets us force a resolution. So we can download that after. And we'll click Q to quit and terminate, and we'll reboot. All right, we're back in. As you can see, there is the strobing or the inverted colors like we mentioned before the reboot. So we're gonna log in and we'll get that fixed up. Now that we're in, we can go to the Open Core Legacy Patcher page to get that link. Okay, there's our Res Extreme. And we'll download this. Okay, we're there. And we will go into the finder. We'll open up our downloads folder. We'll drag res extreme right to the applications folder and then we'll start it up. And open. And we can click on the down arrow and click force a resolution. And there we go. Now we won't have any other strobing effects. We should be able to close this window here. And then that's it. We've got our Mac Pro up and running with accelerated graphics. As you can see, the speed is pretty quick and everything works. The final step is to open up Open Core Legacy Patcher one more time. And we're going to install the bootloader to the internal hard drive so we can disconnect the USB and then we can boot off the internal hard drive and have the verbose mode off. So now all we need to do is change those patcher settings again, number five. And now we want to check all these settings. Disable AMFI is already disabled. We got SIP and Secure Boot are on. So we have to go into Secure Boot and SIP number 11. And we want to disable both. Now they're both disabled. We have to disable verbose mode. Click number one. And then we're going to disable it by clicking no. And then we are going to also click on number four to disable the boot picker mode. We want to click N for no. 
And now we have all the settings that we need. Now, the final one I wanted to talk to was those late bloom settings. So the default setting was fine. But again, if your Mac is having a little bit harder time booting, like you keep getting to that screen where it won't boot after we install the patches, you might have to, to increase the delay to maybe three, four, or 500. The Again, the 250 boots just fine off the USB, so the 250 should be fine also booting off the internal drive. So we're gonna leave that setting there. So now we'll click Q to quit. Now we have to build the open core and put the files into a temporary location and they're all right now in that folder. Now we can install to the internal drive. We'll click number two. Before that, let's eject our USB drive and unplug it. Okay, disconnected. So now there will be only one option to install to. So we'll click on number two and it's checking the drive. It should only find one and it does the internal drive. We'll click on zero and then number one for the EFI and then enter in our administrator password. Installing. Done. Okay, cue to quit. Let's reboot. And now hold on option. Once we change from the USB to the internal drive, we have to make that internal drive the default boot loader. So we'll hold down option and we should see the boot picker. We'll arrow over to EFI, hold down the control key. We'll see it turn to a circle with an arrow, hit enter. The default boot disk is now selected and the Mac Pro will boot every single time right up automatically. And then now it will show the regular Apple logo with the progress bar. We're at the login screen. We have accelerated graphics and automatic booting setup. We'll log back in and that's installing Mac OS Big Sur, the latest version on a 2010 Mac Pro with Open Core Legacy Patcher. The next and final part of this video will go over how to uninstall Open Core Legacy Patcher and a couple troubleshooting items. Let's get into that. Okay, in this final section, I'm going to go over some of the interesting things that you might need to know. For example, how to boot into recovery with Open Core Legacy Patcher and how to uninstall Open Core if you don't want to use it anymore and a couple of the troubleshooting items. One of the biggest things that you might see is that if you see a big a prohibited sign that it boots to, that might mean that for some reason you tried to boot off the normal EFI booter, for example, and you're trying to get to Big Sur and you did not click the EFI boot right here and you might get that prohibited sign or you might get a error that says this version of mac os is not supported on this platform and that's because you let it boot normal and you did not select efi boot or it wasn't defaulted from the main drive now let's talk about how to get into recovery here okay to boot to recovery all you need to do is power up or restart your mac and then you're going to hold down the option key. Okay, once you see this screen after holding down the option key, you first have to go into EFI boot, but you can't just click enter. You have to also hold down option when you click enter. So it also loads up the EFI boot picker and doesn't automatically go there. Then once you're at this screen, click the space bar and you'll see the recovery. All you need to do is arrow over and click on recovery and it'll boot right into Mac OS recovery. All right, we're in macOS recovery. Let's reboot. And the final thing I wanted to mention was keep your USB installer handy. In case there's any problems with booting or you change the setting and it doesn't work, you can always go back to your USB installer and your EFI Open Core Legacy Patcher bootloader to be able to get back into recovery or the OS to be able to rescue your machine. Let's talk about how to uninstall Open Core Legacy Patcher from your Mac. Let's say you were gonna sell it on eBay or something and you wanted to get all uninstalled. Well, all you need to do is prepare a High Sierra or a Sierra a USB installer so you you can reinstall Mac OS Big Sur Fresh, back up all your files, and then you can follow these instructions and I'll put this link in the description. Basically, you're gonna mount that hidden EFI partition. You're gonna delete all the open core files that are in there. You're gonna reset the NVRAM and then reinstall Mac OS Big Sur Fresh. Next, let's talk about how to get support for Open Core Legacy Patcher and Mac OS Big Sur if you're having a problem installing or the system's not booting or something like that. Feel free, again, always leave a comment and I'll see if I can give you a hand. But as the comments come in, it's hard to respond to all of you. So what I can recommend is first go to this page and I'll also put a link to this in the description is to get help with some of your issues. First of all, there is an Open Core Legacy Patcher Discord server where there's multiple people and developers that will give you a hand if you're having 
having an issue, just make sure you document all your issues and you can post it there. Also, feel free to read this how to debug with OpenCore before opening an issue in the OpenCore Legacy Patchers Issues tab in GitHub. So if you open up this page, you can see that there's issues already here and you might already see the issue that you're having in here and you can just respond and realize, oh, hey, it's not just me. So keep an eye out here first, then you can go to the OpenCore Legacy Patcher Discord page to try to get help. Let's talk about how to support the Open Core Legacy Patcher developers. They work on this as a hobby and they love the patcher, but what they do need is older Mac hardware. So if you have an older, for example, Mac that can run Mac OS Sierra or newer, and you wanna be able to donate to the developers, you can do that. Reach out to McCullough on this address down here and you can talk to them to see what they currently need. They also need spare serial ATA SSD hard drives. So anything that you could donate to the program they would absolutely love. Finally, and most importantly, let's talk about OpenCore Legacy Patcher acknowledgements. I talked to McCullough, who is the co-founder of OpenCore Legacy Patcher, along with Dina Kay, and I asked him who would we want to acknowledge all the work that was put into the Big Sur OpenCore Legacy Patcher. And not everybody could be put on the list, but there was at least a couple that we wanted to highlight. And first of all, I wanted to thank you, McCullough, for putting all your work into OpenCore Legacy Patcher. It's an absolute fantastic patcher that keeps Max alive well into the future. Plus, thank you for answering all my questions. All the information in this video, I want it to be correct and you were able to help me get that information to all of you. So thank you so much. And then next, let's talk about Dina Kay. Dina Kay is the co-founder of Dortania and helped draft and write much of Open Core Legacy Patcher plus co-develop many of the patches used in Open Core Legacy Patcher. The next is a sentient bot who without him, there would be no non-metal acceleration patch. Patches, and that is one of the biggest parts of Open Core Legacy Patcher. Thank you, a sentient bot. The next is Ostauer Sportler, who was instrumental in understanding the iMac upgrade patches. And I apologize if I didn't get your name correctly, but I gave it my best shot. The next person is Vit9696, who is insanely helpful in understanding the inner workings of Mac firmwares, as well as writing Mac specific Open Core patches. And of course, how could we forget the famous DOS Dude One, who is written multiple patchers in the past for Catalina, Mojave, who wrote the new GUI application that I just went over in this video. Thank you very much, Dostude. And finally, Barry KN. Barry Kane was a previous patcher developer for the Micro Patcher, who was at the forefront of understanding all that broke with Mac OS Big Sur. His research is the foundation of many of Open Core Legacy patches are based off of. So thank you all and all the people that weren't listed. I know I see you guys posting in the Discord chat all day long, trying to work and fix different issues and bring all these new features to, for example, Mac OS Monterey, which is coming soon. So thank you everyone, really appreciate it. This was the ultimate open core legacy patcher on three different Macs using three different install ways to install Mac OS Big Sur on your Mac. I hope this was helpful. I hope one of those scenarios worked for you. I hope all the instructions worked really well for you. If this video did prove value to you, click on that like and share. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, click on that subscribe button. If you're already a subscriber, you know I truly appreciate it. We'll catch you in the next video, thanks. Ostauer, Ostauer, Ostauer's support. F Ostauer's. Mm -hmm.